You know, Joe is just way to the left, even of the Democratic mainstream. What he and Nancy Pelosi and President Obama are trying to do to this country, though, concerns me a great deal. So a lot of these guys never really believed in the traditional American model of limited government and personal freedom and individual responsibility and a free enterprise system. Instead, what they wanted is a giant, powerful government that controls the economy, redistributes wealth, and allows their mandarins to force the kind of outcomes that they think the rest of us should have. Well, here's my thought on that. France might be a nice place to visit, but I don't want to be France. <laughs> When I think about all that they have already done and that which they're trying to do, and then I think about the election that's coming up in less than three weeks, I'm reminded of a great line from the great statesman Winston Churchill who said about all of us, he said, you can always count on the Americans to get it right after they've exhausted every other possible option. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you that the Barack Obama, Nancy Pelosi, Joe Sestak agenda is the process of exhausting the other options and on November 2nd, we're going to get it right. You know, the fact is, the fact is, we can have prosperity. We can have a strong economic recovery. You know, I think of our economy, and think of, think of a great racehorse. You know, it's beautiful, it's a powerful, it's the fastest animal. It would easily win the race, hands down, except for one small problem. They put a 600-pound jockey on the horse. And these guys in Washington want to keep feeding the jockey and starving the horse. This is the problem we have. But the fact is, you know, all the fundamental assets of this great society, they're, they're still there, right? Our factories weren't destroyed. Our farms are still productive. Our minds still work. We still have the intellectual infrastructure, the entrepreneurial creativity, and the work ethic of, of Pennsylvania and American workers. It's all still there. All we need are the right policies to unleash that energy and bring back a roaring economy, the kind of recovery that we've had after previous recessions. We can do it again. We've just got to put in place the principles that got us here. You know, I am convinced that the 21st century can be another great American century. We've just got to remember what got us here. You know, we went from being a third world colonial backwater to the greatest, richest, most successful and prosperous country in the history of the world. We didn't do it by expecting the government to do it for us. We did it because we believed in ourselves and our communities and each other. If we restore those fundamental principles, our future is going to be very bright. For starters, there's a few simple things we need to do. Number one, we've got to make the 2003 tax cuts permanent and not have a huge tax increase on anybody. A second thing we got to do is clear away the threats of all of these, these excessive, wildly over-the-top regulations. I'm talking about cap-and-trade and card check and the implementation of this health care bill, the stuff that's having this chilling effect. Let's just clear that away. And I, and I think we can do that. And the third thing we got to do is we got to get spending under control. This isn't rocket science. You can't borrow and spend your way to prosperity. If we restore some discipline on the spending side and get this deficit under control, then I am convinced this economy is going to take off. You know, one of the striking things about this amazing country that the rest of the world calls America and we get to call home is that every single generation of Americans has worked hard and has turned over to their kids an even greater country than the one they grew up in. It's been true. From the, there are no exceptions from the very beginning of this country. That's been the story. And so every generation of Americans has grown up with a wonderful country and the reasonable expectations that their kids would lead an even better life than they've had. If we stay on the path that these guys have us on in Washington, we could become the first generation of Americans that would hand over to our kids a diminished country, one of fewer opportunities, one of less hope and less prosperity. Folks, we cannot let that happen. And we're not going to let it happen. I want to leave you with this one last thought, and that is, I believe with all my heart that it's our birthright as Americans to dream great dreams. It's the responsibility of elected officials to preserve and defend the freedom that allows us to live those dreams. Thank you very much for your help.